This is Charter Local Edition. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We are joined today by Tom Hunt. He is the vice president of the Riverside Unified School District. He is joined today by the chief academic officer of that district. Her name is Lynn Carmen Day. Thank you so much for joining us. I want to speak with you both about the new world that we're in today because it really is very different from even five years ago. No child left behind, drill and kill, really focus on memorizing facts. Now we're in kind of the state standard common core world. Madam Chief Academic Officer, tell us about it. Well, I think that for California, it's been a significant and positive shift, but it hasn't been this drastic transformation of education. Because if you recall, 97, we had new state standards for the first time, and that was probably a little bit more drastic. Mm. The changes in the Common Core standards primarily focus on the idea of having our students college, career, and world ready. Right. So of course, as you know, we always wanted that for our students, so that's not new. But the difference is that now um, across the nation, our governors had a chance to um, decide if that was something that we wanted to buy into as a um, state. And as you know, initially I think it was 48 governors signed up, but Common Core has become a bit controversial. Some states are pulling out of it. I want to ask you, Tom, about what you're hearing as a school board member here in Riverside and the Inland Empire about what the views are of Common Core. I've traveled around the country mm -hmm. And, you know, in some places, Common Core is a dirty word. In other places, it's pretty neutral. Yeah, thanks, Brad. You know, I, I think when we talk to teachers, they're having a time learning it and br bringing it aboard the older teachers. Right. So while they were having to teach classrooms and, and they're having to learn Common Core, but I, I see it being accepted towards the end of the year and, and embraced. Right. Most parents I talk to are very pleased with it. They, they like the uh, interpersonal relationship with the teacher. Uh, there are... Court, I have a school board member colleague that's uh -huh. very much against it and speaks out against it a lot. And what's the concern? What do you hear? You know, to the extent there are opponents, what do they say? Well, I actually had the opportunity to uh, look into some of the opponents. Right. Glenn Beck is one of them. Of course, yes. Um, and really the idea is that they feel like there's not specific content that has yes. been embraced in the past in these state standards. For example, can I give you an example? Please. In math, in the past, we may have taught students the algorithm or right. actually how to calculate something. Now we're asking them to think about how you would solve a problem. And it doesn't mean that you still have to calculate it correctly. You still have to have a right or wrong answer if that's okay. what it determines is necessary, right. but you also are thinking more deeply about are there alternative ways to get to the answer. And, and that's really the key of Common mm -hmm. Core. Maybe fewer subjects or topics are being taught, but they're going deeper into the analysis. Is that what parents are saying? They like the depth that the children are getting? I think yes, yes, yes. overall. I also think that some parents are feeling like, wow, this is intense. Right. <laughs> and so we're, we're wanting to make sure that we're providing enough support, not only to our students, but also to our parents. But right. let me ask you also about the students. I would presume those in elementary school, pretty malleable. They're not really sure how it's being taught, and as long as it's being taught in a way they understand they're happy. Junior high, you know, they're almost set in their ways. High school, maybe hard to do the shift. So what's happening with the older students? How are they adjusting? Very well, I think. You think so? What, what I've seen in, in uh, Arlington High School, where I spent a lot of time this year, very progressive. And, and their mm. scores were up uh, And as far as they're just on the campus right. uh, and uh, graduation rates. I think kids are responding well because they're being challenged to think. And that's what's going to happen when they leave our, that stage with that diploma. Uh, let me ask you, though, about thinking because mm -hmm. for better or for worse, we still have standardized tests. Yeah. And standardized tests tend to be pretty traditional, tend to be, as I call it, pretty no child left behind. Right. You know, very, kind of like fill in the bubble, get the right answer. Uh, I know that California and the other states are adopting adaptive standardized tests. The SAT apparently is going through a revamp. Are we kind of caught up in terms of the way we're testing kids with the way we're changing the way we educate kids? 
Well, I think the goal is that that transition's happen happening in unison. Right. And so I think that we definitely have um, testing that we implemented this year, which is, which is the Smarter right. Balance assessment. And let's talk about that as long okay. as you mentioned Smarter Balance assessment. That is the new way that students will be tested. It's Absolutely. a fascinating model. The students are given, I'll call it an iPad, I don't know what else to call it, a tablet or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. uh, iPad is a dirty word in some school districts, not in our <laughs> USD. And when they answer a question, if they get it right, they'll go to question, let's say, 2A. If they get it wrong, they'll go to 2B. Right. Correct. You know, and so you're trying to, you mm -hmm. know, meet the student where they're at. It's an adaptive test. Yeah, and so how's that gone? It's going well, mm -hmm. but we have to remember it's new. So right. there's some um, growth in the how you take the test and then the kinds of items. In the past, as you know, with the state test, it was A, B, C, D. Sure. And the students would have the opportunity to take select one of those choices. Right. Now, there might be an open response. Wow. Most of the assessments have what's mm -hmm. called... Um, a task, a performance task, right. or a mini performance, constructed learning experience. And so that's something new for our students to apply that kind of thinking and that kind of um, application to an assessment. So, so not new to the learning. I think we've always had right. some effective learning opportunities for students like that, but the fact that now we're assessing that kind of learning mm -hmm. yeah. is optimal. It's also a scary time for parents who have kids in high school, which you do, and I will soon, because now the SAT, and I don't think, is the ACT going through a revamp? I know the SAT is going through a revamp. Not that I know of Yeah, that. so as educators of high school students, what are you doing to kind of get them prepared for this new model? Well, there's multiple things. I think <laughs> one, I, I think that's yeah. kind of a loaded question. It is, no it's doubt, a hard and question. I don't mean it that way. But I think if you look at why the new state standards were put into place to begin with, mm -hmm. it was because our universities and industry right. were saying, wait, our kids, you might be saying that you're preparing them for their future, but they're not being prepared. So what is it that looks different? So you'll see a lot more writing. You'll see a lot more application of um, expository reading. But what was fascinating to me is that the new SAT dumped the writing section. It's now optional, as I understand it. So it seems a, a bit counterintuitive to what I thought Common Core and State Sanders are trying to push, no? SAT's always been a little bit counterintuitive. <laughs> so. That Fair was a enough. great answer, right. Mr. Hunt. I like no, it. No, no, but, but it, it really is. I mean, we laugh, but it can be yeah. very frustrating. I want to get your read, though. Yeah. Um, a lot of smaller, more liberal arts types of schools have decided to opt against requiring the SAT and the ACT. Recently, George Washington University, a major institution in Washington, right, D.C., right. announced they were dumping the requirement. Uh, have the floodgates opened either? Well, I don't know yeah, as either. far as other universities, and I'll let uh. you speak to it as well, but the truth behind it is if those assessments aren't an indicator of success in college mm -hmm. or success in the workplace right. following college or persistence in college, then I think it's a great question to pose as a, right. a higher it's a great education challenge. system. Great challenge the SAT, the, right. the industry that it is. So where do you go with this, with this shift in the way, the way we're testing, with some universities dumping these standardized tests? How do you plan? How do you prepare? Another loaded question. <laughs> well, you know, one thing we're doing at RUSD, and I don't know if this is quite mm -hmm. the answer, but we are reaching out actively with our Cal States and our, right. and our UCs. We, we have, under Lynn's time, you know, mm. she's established a relationship with Cal State San Bernardino. We send a lot of kids that way. Sure. We have articulation agreements now. I think we'll begin to be able to grow those things. Also, you, you know, the Cal State president, Tim White, Dr. White, comes from Riverside. Of course. Will you come back? Both of you, I, you especially. If you would like, <laughs> you must. I, I told you to be good if I brought she, her. Well, no, her name you. is Lynn Car uh, Carmen Day. She is with RUSD. He is Tom Hunt, also on the board of trustees. My name is Brad Palmer. This is Charter Local Edition.